Welcome to another edition of the Patino Chronicles, a Fox Sports production profiling the life, the career, the journey of Rick Patino, The Hall of Famer, the St. John's head coach, joined me to talk about a variety of things, and one of the areas that we hit on was the state of college basketball. Close to 2,000 transfers in the portal over the offseason. NIL money serving as bidding wars for players during the offseason. What would Patino change to college basketball, and what does he make of the current climate? Here's what he had to say. How many dinners, events, fundraisers, have you been to since taking over this job? Well, as you know, the NIL is, a, we're no longer coaching amateurs. We're coaching professional basketball players now. Name, image, and likeness has afforded the opportunity for these young men to now make a living playing college basketball. John, I'll tell you this. I don't know how we're going to sustain this because right now it's not a tax deduction in New York. Uh, and... If I come to you as a St. John's alumnus or fan and say, listen, can you give me twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for this collective NIL? You'll say, Well, can can I write the check to St. John's? No, you no, you have to write it to a collective and you're not going to get a tax deduction. That's pretty difficult. So I don't know how it's going to be sustained. I don't know the longevity of it, because we're going to run out of people. Now, I will say. St. John's is very healthy because we have Subway alumni. We not only have an alumni base with the second largest Catholic school in America next to DePaul, but we have about over three, 400,000 fans that are Subway alumni. I love St. John's growing up with them, grew, grew up with Louie. Are you good with NIL? You know, here's the way. Some coaches are just nonstop whiners and complainers right, right. about it. Here's the way I look at it. Here are the rules. If these are the rules that, that we have to play by, then I'm going to be the best at making the NIL strong and potent. Whatever the rules may be, from the way you run the three-point line, I'm going to adopt the rules, and I'm going to try to get the most out of that. So I'm not going to complain about it. It's here to stay. I'm happy for the players, and what I try to do is educate them. The other day, we had somebody from Goldman Sachs come in to tell them about compounding their money, how to invest money, how to pay their taxes, and get them to understand about money. Because now they're suddenly coming into it, and a lot of these players are going to make more in college than they would going to play for Panathinaikos in the EuroLeague. So you got, they've got to understand it. So it's good in this sense. A lot of kids aren't rushing to get out of college. And they're going to get into the junior senior year because of the NIL. If I made you commissioner of college basketball right now, and I said, you can make some changes to this sport, what areas would you attack? Well, I would immediately get rid of the enforcement staff of the NCAA. They're no longer needed. No, and, and I've been through it. And I don't mean they're not good people. I'd get rid of that. And I would make conferences be in charge of enforcement because you police your own in conference. I wouldn't take people from the, the NCAA come in and try to throw things against the wall and see if it sticks. The conference is no more than them. I would have the conf conferences police their own. Uh, and, and that's really, really important. Like they are at Michigan now with Michigan football. The conference ADs in the Big Ten are taking that over. You don't need the enforcement staff to come in and just throw the red flags at you that may not be true or untrue. They're not tied into it. So Michigan State knows about Michigan. Ohio State knows about Michigan and vice versa. So they need to police, conferences need to police their own. Not, so that, that would be one thing I would do. The second thing I would do is do away with the 20-hour rule. You can't pay athletes and tell them how long they should practice. They're professionals now. Professionals need to take care of their trade. If they want to be Olympians, if they want to go on to professional basketball or football, they need to be able to put their time in with a strength coach and a basketball coach according to them. It's no longer, oh, you're taking away academic time or social time. It's nonsense. They're professional athletes. Explain to the folks at home 
who are casuals what the 20 hour rule is. So you get 20 hours uh, and, and we even stretch now players. If you want to stretch, stretch on your own. You're not going to take 15 minutes away. Once we get into it, you have 20 hours per week, six days a week. You have to take off one day per week. So I understood because I was going to Providence in 87. I was going some five and a half to six hours a day. People say that, my Providence team was the reason they put that rule in because we were going probably 30, 40 hours a week. I'm saying this, you can't tell people, athletes, how hard they have to train to make it. Can't tell them that. So that, that should be, can't tell them how much they should study that you have to put in 20 hours of studying per week. You have to leave it up to each coach because if you do too much as a coach, you're going to wear your team out and have nothing ready for March. So I would do away with that. I would do away with a lot of different things in college basketball. Rule-wise, I'd make a couple of changes, certainly. Uh, I'm not for the 24-second clock, even though I'm an up-tempo NBA guy. Yeah. I'm not for that because we pass the ball more. We cut more. Uh, we play a little bit more defensively. So uh, I'm not for that. I think 30 seconds is, is perfect for us. Uh, but I would change, certainly, calling timeout and being able to advance the basketball. But I would, I would do away with a lot of things that don't need to be there now that they are professional athletes. Should the NCAA tournament be adjusted in its format? I'm not against them, not for it. Uh, I think March Madness is as big as it gets. It's the only way that we could be on the same level with football. So with that being said, if you want to enhance it, have more teams in it that may deserve it, I think that's fine. It's not going to take away from the elite. There are close to 2,000 kids who enter the transfer portal over the offseason. No matter how anybody feels, that's an alarming number. How does that get fixed? Well, I think the NCAA is doing a good job in this area, doing away with these waivers, uh, fake waivers. You know, it, so once you do away with that, now that'll help somewhat. It won't be free agent. We're in a one-year free agency. The best possible athlete you can get, like let's say um, R.J. Ruiz from Iowa, our best, he transferred from UMass. Well, now he's here to stay. He can't transfer again. He'd have to have a waiver to do that. He has to sit out now. So the best people you can get from the portal are the ones that transfer in as sophomores. So right now I have two freshmen, and they, they may want to transfer if they're not happy with where they're at. Well, we've got to make sure as coaches that they're fulfilled and they're playing and they're, they're happy with their growth and development. So, yes, the portal is an issue. But as long as the NCAA does away with these waivers, we, we can live with it. 